This is The Big Picture, an official television report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Hi, welcome back to Historic Nerd. Today I want to talk to you about portable nuclear weapons, most notably the ones from Fallout. There are the ones that Liberty Prime throws like a football, and then there are the ones fired from the Fatboy portable nuclear launcher. What I want to tell you is those nuclear weapons used by either Liberty Prime or the Fat Boy actually have a basis in reality. The Fat Boy atomic launcher from Fallout 3 is actually somewhat based in reality. The United States military developed something called the Davy Crockett recoilless rifle or the M65. There would surely be a place of honor for the nuclear rifle. Developed in the Cold War 60s, the M65. This weapon was designed with an entirely new premise of warfare in mind. The concept was that armies would be smaller because battles would be fought with atomic weapons as opposed to the gigantic industrial total wars they'd encountered in the last half of the last century. Two. This new era in atomic warfare would be waged by atomic battalions, ones that were designed to engage the enemy in kind of conflicts where a smaller force was required. Where, like let's say, in the 1960s if a Soviet battalion had landed on US soil, they would be countered by an atomic battalion. A smaller, a smaller group of soldiers, basically, where then a jeep-mounted recoilless rifle with an atomic weapon would be deployed. These weapons exploded with about the yield of the ammonium nitrate bombs used at the Oklahoma City bombings. But the weapon's maximum range was about three miles. However, the fallout for these weapons exceeded that. So for anyone to want to use these weapons, it was borderline suicidal. They have learned from authoritative sources the bomb's power and capabilities, the effects at various distances of heat, blast, and radiation in an atomic explosion. The greatest part of the energy, about 50%, is released in the form of blast. More than 30% is heat, and about 15% is nuclear radiation. They have learned what exposure can do to an unprotected individual. But along with this, they learn also how various kinds of shelter, including the soldier's foxhole, can give protection. What's perhaps the most fun about the Fallout version of the weapon, the Fat Boy, is that you're using it in close range or in a number of different scenarios that allow you to take out your opponent. But for the U.S. Army, when they wanted to use these things, they'd have to bring an entire battalion of people with an entire support network of individuals that would come out use the weapon, and then tell you where you could travel towards the enemy that was safe from radiation with small cones. Because that makes a difference. On this atomic testing ground, the Rad Safe Man provides the soldier with an invaluable reassurance. To provide the Army with a nucleus of Rad Safe experts, all units coming to Desert Rock are trained to be their own radiation monitors. The M65 was used in a number of different tactical engagements, none of which were real, thankfully. But unfortunately, the men involved in these engagements were well within the fallout radius of the weapon, considering its maximum range was about three miles for a jeep mounted attack, atomic weapon. It's either uh, hand carried on foot or by a jeep. What's most intriguing about the weapon is, in essence, that it's a jeep mounted rifle or a G-mounted cannon, that essentially you'd mount the atomic weapon on the end of the vehicle and then have a projectile fired from the rear of the cannon, which then would hit the atomic weapon and propel it towards the target. So, the potential failure rate on this weapon could have been exponentially higher, blowing up on the uh, firing stand, I don't know how many times, but thankfully, the weapon was never used in any real capacity aside from propaganda films or drilling. This is a M65 155mm recoilless rifle with a .01 kiloton nuclear warhead on the end of it. The recoilless rifle works from the rear. You load it back here. It fires a projectile up through, launching the nuclear warhead uh, up to three miles. Considering the weapon was basically useless and or suicidal for the individuals using it, the weapon really wasn't used, but still, portable nuclear weapons like that still attributed to about a third of the U.S. atomic potential 
for about the at the height of the Cold War, around the 10,000 warheads we had floating around, a third of them were these portable nuclear weapons we could have used at any time or given to any battalion anywhere. But thankfully they weren't used because of how ridiculous these weapons were. When the weapon is detonated, it creates a cloud. If the wind is blowing toward the crew, the crew becomes irradiated from this radioactive cloud. The mass creation of these weapons has contributed to a lot of the misunderstanding and lack of knowledge about how deadly atomic weapons are to anyone involved in their processing. The individuals who fired them were well within the atomic blast radius, at least for the fallout, not necessarily the shock radius. but still uh, assembles into uh, the mushroom. It's a wonderful sight to behold. Even the Soviets had a number of atomic weapons like this that were portable and could be used in short range like that. If the United States had decided to break the blockade and invade Cuba, the Soviets had distributed a large number of short range atomic weapons to destroy American landing craft. Thankfully, we didn't because unfortunately Fidel Castro, having a lack of understanding of how a devastating atomic warfare would be, said they might as well just fire off the weapons. But luckily, a Soviet advisor told him the catastrophic events that would follow if the war had broken out. So thankfully, that conflict never occurred. 18 miles behind ground zero, still near enough for a close-up view of the explosion. And finally, just before dawn, H hour. the next time you fire off an atomic weapon in Fallout 3, remember, there could have been someone in the 1960s firing off something very similar. <laughs>